My dad's parents live less than two hours drive from my house. It's a farmhouse but I liked the atmosphere. When I started riding motorcycles in high school, I often went there alone during summer and winter vacations. My grandfather and grandmother were always happy to welcome me. But the last time I went was just before my senior year of high school, so it has been more than 10 years since I last went. It's not that I didn't go, but that I couldn't go, and here's why. It was the beginning of spring break and the weather was beautiful, so I rode my motorcycle to my grandfather's house. It was still cold, but the porch was nice and warm, and I relaxed there for a while. Then, I heard... <coughs> then I heard a strange sound. I heard a strange sound. It was not a mechanical sound, but it sounded as if it was made by a person. It sounded like it could be either a muffled sound or a semi-muffled sound. As I wondered what it was, I spotted a hat on the hedge in the garden. It wasn't on the hedge. The hat moved straight to the side to a break in the hedge. When I came to it, I saw a woman. Well, the hat was worn by the woman. She was wearing a white dress, but the hedge was about two meters high. How tall a woman could stick her head out of that hedge? When I was surprised, the woman moved again and disappeared from sight. Her hat was also gone. Also, before I knew it, the pop-pop sound had also disappeared. At the time, I only thought it was either a tall woman wearing very thick-soled boots to begin with, or a tall man wearing high-heeled shoes and dressed as a woman. Later, over tea in the living room, I told Grandma and Grandpa about what had happened earlier. I told Grandma and Grandpa over tea in the living room, I saw a big woman earlier. I wonder if it was a man dressed as a woman, but they only said, oh, wow, she was taller than the fence. She was wearing a hat and she was making strange noises like pop pop. As soon as I said that they stopped moving, no, they really stopped. After that they asked when they saw it, where they saw it, how high it was above the hedge, and so on. Grandpa asked them questions with an angry look on his face. When I answered his questions, he suddenly became silent and went to the telephone in the hallway and started to make a call somewhere. The sliding door was closed, so I couldn't understand what he was saying. Grandma seemed to be trembling. Grandpa must have finished the phone call, because when he came back, he said, Stay the night, she said. No, I can't let you go home today, she said. I wondered desperately if I had done something terribly wrong. I thought desperately, but I couldn't think of anything. Even that woman didn't go to see him herself, she just showed up from the other side. I said, Grandma, take care of it. I'm going to pick up Mr. K. And then she drove off in a light truck. I'm afraid that 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 I'm afraid. She said, I think I've been enchanted by the eight foot tall lady. Grandpa will take care of it. You don't have to worry about anything. She said in a trembling voice, don't worry about anything. After that, Grandma talked and talked until Grandpa came back. There is a troublesome thing around here called Hachi's Hakusama. She looks like a big woman. As her name suggests, she is as tall as 8 feet and has a funny laugh with a man-like voice. Depending on the person, she may look like a young woman in mourning clothes, an old woman in a toamzoed kimono, or an elderly woman in a straight kimono. But the common characteristics are that she is an unusually tall woman, that she carries something on her head, and that she has a weird laugh. There are rumors that they haunted travelers in the past, but it is not certain. The Jizo is sealed in this area, now part of X City, but in the past it was X Village, the equivalent of today's Oza, and does not go anywhere else. If you are enchanted by Yushaku-sama, you will be taken to death within a few days. The last time the 8-foot tall lord was harmed was about 15 years ago. I heard later that the Jizo is sealed because there are only a limited number of paths along which Yushaku-sama can travel, for unknown reasons. And the Jizo was enshrined at the border of the village along the path. There are four Jizo enshrined at the boundaries of the road from east to west, south to north. As to why they decided to keep them there, it is said that there was some kind of agreement with the surrounding villages. For example, water rights were given priority. I wonder if the old people thought it was a good thing if they could make a favorable agreement. Since the damage caused by Hachi's Hakusama is only once every few years to a dozen years or so, it didn't seem realistic at all to hear that. Of course it did. Eventually, Grandpa came back with one old woman. She said, you've had a rough time of it. Now hold this. The old woman, Mrs. K, gave me a bill. Then she went upstairs with a grandpa and was doing something. Grandma stayed with them and even followed them to the bathroom, not letting them close the bathroom door completely. It was only here that I began to think that something was wrong. After a while, they took me upstairs and put me in a room. 
There, all the windows were covered with newspaper, and on top of that there was an omochidashi, a kind of paper with a talisman on it, and heated salt was placed in the four corners of the room. There was also a wooden box, not what you would call an altar, with a small Buddha image on it. There were also two potty pots that I wondered where they had come from. I guess I was supposed to use them to do my business. It will be sunset soon. Listen, you are not to leave here until tomorrow morning. I won't call you, and neither will your grandmother, and I won't talk to you. That's right, don't leave here until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. At 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, you go first. I'll call home. I had no choice but to nod in silence. Don't forget to keep the money with you. If something happens, ask for help in front of the Buddha. I was told by Mr. K to do so as well. I was told I could watch TV, so I turned it on, but I was too distracted to watch it. I was not even motivated to eat the rice balls and snacks my grandma had given me when I was locked in my room. So I just wrapped myself in the futon and lay there, graggy. When I woke up, I saw a late night TV program on, I don't remember what it was, and when I looked at my watch, it was past 1 a.m. I didn't have a cell phone at that time. I didn't have a cell phone at that time. While I was thinking that I had woken up at a very bad time, I heard a tapping sound on the window pane. I don't think it was a pebble or something hitting the window, but a light tap with my hand. I couldn't tell if the sound was caused by the wind or if someone were really banging on the window, but I desperately tried to convince myself that it was the wind. I took a sip of tea to calm down, but I was still scared, so I forced myself to watch the TV with the sound turned up. Then I heard Grandpa's voice. Hey, are you okay? I approached the door without thinking, but I immediately remembered Grandpa's words. I approached the door without thinking, but then I remembered Grandpa's words. What's wrong? It sounded infinitely like my grandfather's voice, but it wasn't his voice. I don't know why, but I felt that way, and as soon as I thought that, I felt goosebumps all over my body. Suddenly, I looked at the heaped salt in the corner and saw that it had turned black at the top, waiting to go out eight feet tall. At first sight, I sat down in front of the Buddha statue, clutched the bill and began to pray desperately, please help me. At that moment, I heard that voice, and the window pane began to thump, thump, thump. I knew it wasn't that tall, but I couldn't help but picture the scene of that thing reaching out from below and tapping on the window pane. All I could do now was pray to the statue. It felt like an incredibly long night, but morning still came. Before I knew it, the TV was showing the morning news. The time displayed in the corner of the screen was 7.13. The banging on the glass and the voices had stopped without my noticing. It seemed that I had fallen asleep or passed out. The salt had turned even darker. Just to be sure, I looked at my watch and saw that it was the same time, so I fearfully opened the door. When I opened the door, I found Grandma and Mr. K there with a worried look on their faces. I opened the door to find Grandma and Mr. K with worried faces. When I went downstairs, my father was there too. Grandpa came out and urged us to get in the car, and when we went out into the yard, there was a one-box van, where he had brought it from. And there were some men in the yard. The one box had nine people in it and they sat me in the middle of the middle row, with Mr. K sitting in the passenger seat. All the men in the yard also got in. In all, there were nine people in the car and we were surrounded on all eight sides. I said to myself, this is a big deal. You may be wondering, but from now on, close your eyes and look down. We can't see anything, but you will. Be patient and don't open your eyes until I say it's okay. An old man of about 50 years old sitting right next to him said so. Then they started driving in a convoy, a light truck driven by my grandfather in the lead, followed by the van I was in, and then the passenger car driven by my father. The convoy was moving at a very slow speed. The speed was probably less than 20 kilometers per hour. Soon after, Mr. K muttered to himself, this is the point where we have to hang on, and began chanting something like a Buddhist prayer. <laughs> I heard that voice again. I clutched the bill Mr. K gave me, closed my eyes and looked down as I was told to do. But for some reason I opened my eyes thinly and looked outside briefly. What I saw was a white dress. It was moving with the car. Was it following me with those big thighs? My head was outside the window and I couldn't see it. However, it started to make a gesture of lowering its head as if it was trying to look into the car. Subconsciously, I let out a kiss. Don't look, my neighbor shouted. I hurriedly squeezed my eyes shut and clutched the bill even tighter. Tips, tips, tips. The sound of banging on the glass begins. The people riding around you also make sure a and n and noises. 
Even though they cannot see the thing and cannot hear the voice, they seem to hear the sound. Mr. K's Buddhist prayer becomes more forceful. Eventually, when I thought the voices and sounds had broken off, Mr. K shouted, I got out of it just fine. The men surrounding him, who had been silent up to that point, let out a sigh of relief. Eventually, the car stopped at a wide spot on the road and they were transferred to my father's car. While my father and grandfather were bowing to the other men, Mr. K came up to me and said, Let me see the bill. I unconsciously looked at the bill I was still clutching and saw that the entire bill had turned black. Mr. K gave me a new bill, saying, I think you're all right now, but keep this for a while just in case. After that, my father and I went back to our house. The bike was delivered later by my grandfather and a neighbor. He told me that one of his friends was enchanted and lost his life when he was a child. He also knew people who had moved to other places because of the enchantment. He said that the men in the van were all related to his grandfather's family. In other words, they were all related to him, albeit very thinly. Grandpa, who drove in front of him, and my father, who drove behind him, were also related to him by blood. And they did what they did to cover up the eight-foot Sama's eyes as much as possible. My dad's brother, uncle, couldn't come over here overnight so they had people come over who were less blood-related but could get together quickly. Still, since seven men in quicksand could not be in the present moment, and since daytime seemed safe for the nighttime, we were locked in our room for the night. On the way, they were prepared to take the place of their grandfather or father if the worst happened. He explained to me what I have already mentioned and reminded me not to go back there. After returning home, when I talked to my grandfather on the phone, I asked him if he had called out to me that night, but he assured me that he had not done so. I thought I knew it was. I felt a chill run down my spine again. The fact is that young people, especially children, are often victimized by Hachi's Haku-sama before they reach adulthood. When a person who is still a child or young person is in a state of extreme anxiety. When a child or young person is in a state of extreme anxiety and he hears the voice of a relative say something like that, he is likely to allow himself to be easily influenced. Ten years have passed since then, and when we tend to forget about the incident, an unfortunate later story has emerged. The Jizo statue that enshrines the eight-foot statue has been broken by someone, the one on the road leading to your house. Grandma died two years ago. Grandpa had passed away two years before, and of course he was not allowed to go to the funeral. Grandpa had died two years before, and of course she wouldn't let him go to the funeral. Now I tell myself that it must be a superstition, but I am still quite worried. I can't help but think that if I hear that voice saying, boo, boo, boo.